worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name.
In the early years of the present century, the descendants of Muttathu Padathu, Joseph and Mary Puttukari, his wife, lived in the village of Arpukara. When Mary was expecting her fourth child, a snake coiled itself around her neck when she was in her garden. From that time onward, Mary remained in indifferent health suffering from shock. The child was baptized on 27th August in St. Mary's Church by Father Joseph Chakala and child was named as Anna. Little Anna Kutti was hardly two months old when her mother died of complications due to her confinement. Providence, however, sent the child a mother in the person of her maternal aunt Annamma, who lived at Mutuchira, 15 miles away. You cannot look after this baby, can you? I am taking her back with me to my place at Mutuchira. So the little one was taken to her aunt's house where she was well looked after. But within six months, Anakuti's father brought the child back to his own home at Arpukara. In her father's home, in the affectionate company of her grandmother, Anakuti grew up. Grandma, I brought some flowers for you. Wow, thank you, dear. My brother broke my doll. Don't cry, Lakshmi Kuti. You can have mine. On another occasion, while she and her friend Lakshmi Kuti were on their way to school, a mischievous boy pushed them. Lakshmi Kuti was wild with anger. You scoundrel, I will tell your father about you and I will report to your teacher also. Anna Kuti then intervened and pacified her friend Lakshmi Kuti. Lakshmi Kuti, our pain is only momentary. If we report him, he will be in serious trouble. Let us forgive those who offend us and God will forgive our offenses. On 27th November 1917, when the child was 7 years old, she made her first Holy Communion. One evening, as Hanakuti was in prayer, suddenly she was surprised to see a young nun in the habit of a Carmelite sister who appeared before her. 
Then the nun said to her, My child, you must follow a dedicated life, a life of sacrifices. Be a nun, my child. As the nun walked away slowly, Annakuti's thoughts went back to the book and she was reading the little white flower. Yes, now I know this nun is Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus. By the time our aunt Annama was adamant on having a niece settled in marriage, Annakuti began to bring pressure on her aunt. But her aunt Annama did not give in. No, a girl's mission is to get married and I am not going back on that. As the day of betrothal approached, Annakuti became more and more restless and confused. Finally, she arrived at a conclusion. It is as they perhaps imagine. My beauty attracts the people. If I can spoil it, I may still win. So saying, she one early morning was walking to the edge of the pit where the chaff was burning and left her knee deep into the burning chaff. With great difficulty, she managed to climb out of the pit with both her feet burnt badly. Annakuti had at last triumphed overcoming all trials and difficulties that stood in her way. In 1927, she was able to join the convent of the poor Clares at Barnanyanam. Welcome to the convent, Annakuti. The 19th May 1930 dawned, the greatest day for Annakuti, the day she was to receive the habit. In 1932, she was appointed as a teacher in the convent school attached to the Clarist convent at Vakakad. In school, her colleagues and superiors were very much impressed with her teaching capacity and her edifying life. Goodbye and God bless you all. Goodbye sister, we will miss you. Later, she was bedridden. Her troubles, meanwhile, took a turn for the worse. A painful swelling appeared on her stomach which spread to her legs also. She is sick. I am afraid to send her back to Baraninyanam. Let us wait for a few more days. The novena seeking the intercession of Father Krayakas, Elias Chavra, starts tomorrow. You are right. Let us hope for the miracle. Sister Alfonso, how are you feeling? <sighs> My child, your prayers have been answered. You are cured. Go in peace, my child. I am cured. You are cured? Yes, yes, I am. It's a miracle. Yes, I think Father Elias cured me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. make any sound or else I'll kill you. Even when Sister Alfonso was sick, many people visited her to share their problems and seek her prayers. Sister, I don't know what to do. My son is such a rich. He's a drunkard and beats his wife and does everything. And what do you do? What else I can do? except shout at him. At some times, if I find him with a blue new wine, I take it and pick it up. He'll be doing it again. Listen, next time this happens, don't shout at him. Just forgive him and pray to Jesus and he will help you. Thank you, sister. I will do as you say. I will pray for you. May God bless you. Sister, sister, my son has stopped drinking. He said as you did. And now he is in a good mind today. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Sister, sister, it's me. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm fine, sister. I wanted to ask you something. I was wondering that 
it is amazing that you were able to smile even though you were undergoing so much pain how do you do that you have to understand the life is like a grain of wheat unless it falls down and dies it it cannot bring new fruit similarly when jesus died for us on the cross he created a new in the heart of men there is no faith without suffering like how we crush the grapes to make wine that is a wonderful thought so i too willing to suffer all the pain in my life till the path of my life jesus christ i am glad that you told me this i will always remember it in the next few days she was suffering with severe cases of tuberculosis and she was bedridden sister it is a tuberculosis and it is dangerous and it could spread to all of us i think it's better if sister alfonsa stays at home don't worry the lord will never leave her side hey come on look she is sleeping yes she is sleeping okay we can keep the rose near by her side fine come let us leave hello mary good morning sister good morning did you come to see me yes sister but we didn't know that you were sick oh that's okay that's a lovely rose it is for me yes sister sister we actually come here to thank you yes sister because of your prayer that in our last exam we got good marks jesus loves you so much children you get good marks in next test too in fact everyone in our class got good marks thanks for your prayer sister thank you we love you sister please tell us so i too now go to your classes and study well We will sister Jesus I want to ask you for something please give all the pains to me during night one day when people see my pain and suffering they feel sympathetic and I don't want that but only you and I should know my suffering and not others kindly grant me the grace On 28th July 1946 the angelic soul of sister Alfonsa flew to the bosom of her divine master The following morning the body was carried to the parish church by the sisters of the convent Her body was laid to rest in the newly built mortuary chapel near the parish church John Paul II formally approved miracles attributed to her intercession and Sister Alfonsa was declared servant of God on 9 July 1985. She was then known as Venerable Sister Alfonsa and she was canonized by saint by Pope Benedict XVI on October 12, 2008.